All right, so I'm out here by the house uh, near the patio, and I've got a mauling uh, 111 rootstock here that I'm doing a couple of different experiments with. And I just want to show you a few of those and uh, work on one of those today. Basically, the plan for this tree is to make a bit of a Franken tree that will have several different varieties on top of it, um, have different main scaffold branches that each one will have its own variety and then as those develop potentially add several other varieties. Uh, we've got at least 15 mature varieties here that already bear fruit so we're going to just pick our favorite eating apples. The orchard is far off in the back so getting out there whenever you just want to go pick a single apple to eat isn't terribly convenient so we want to make this into one that we can come out any time of the summer and just grab an apple off and have it for lunch or uh, just for a snack or whatever. Uh, but I've had this one caged up just in case a deer would be so brazen to come this close to the house. So far I haven't had any evidence of issues like that. Haven't had much rain, so we've got a little bit of yellowing to the leaves. I'm gonna add some uh, more fertilizer in here soon and um, a little bit more water. It's getting late in the season for trying to fertilize very much though and showing some good growth on a few of these suckers, so I'm not too worried about uh, that issue. So the first real project is to graft on different varieties. I've got a Gravenstein I've grafted here already. You can see where it's uh, working on healing over that graft. I unwrapped that just a few weeks ago uh, and it it looks pretty interesting when you look at a graft this short uh, shortly after it's been unwrapped and and see that. So we'll uh, see how that progresses, how that heals up. the calluses always look pretty strange. This one probably should have unwrapped a bit sooner, uh, but it's quite firm. Seems to be good and strong in there. My goal here would be to go ahead and get my first scaffold branch out of this main piece here. I'd like the thing to grow straight, so I might contort this up, um, but I basically want to promote a shoot off of here. Um, even preferably one of these buds that's still on here. I tried notching one of the buds up here, but I didn't get any good result yet with that. That was a few weeks ago. I notched that, but it didn't shoot out, so it might not be till next year we see a good new shoot um, come out of this. Um, but essentially, I'll at least maybe pick a spot a little higher up here and graft to that the next variety, uh, one that could pollinate the original. Uh, and then I'll keep working on getting pollinators, different varieties that will help uh, get each other going. The Gravenstein's a triploid, so not a whole lot of uh, good pollen from that to help other varieties. But if I get a few more on here, it won't matter as long as they're all overlapping and their blooming time's enough to help each other out. Uh, but down here, uh, originally I was thinking that I needed to leave more leaves on this than I needed to in order to help sustain the growth and of the overall uh, tree and make sure it got enough nutrients to be healing over that graft. I don't think that's really the case um, from what I've learned since then. But you're always learning a little bit. So I just decided to turn this into another project here. You can even see the leaves are all pretty small on this, uh, all these different branches. Uh, but I've heard that if you uh, trim your branches down to you know, five or six buds or so, uh, it can help stimulate spur development. And so while uh, I'm not sure that the M111 is one that I'm really interested in eating, I won't know until I taste it. So I'm just trying to experiment with that idea of just trimming everything down to a few buds to see if I develop any spurs, I'm wondering how quickly fruit could develop. So I've just kind of let it keep branching out, but every time it gets a little bit out, then I go ahead and pinch it back. So you can see I've got just real small little branches here. And when I see them start shoot, sending out more shoots and um, going too far, I go ahead and pinch those off. Uh, it's already very thick with all of these, uh, but we won't know till spring if any of these have truly developed into flowering buds. I'm assuming I really won't get anything next year like that, but potentially the next year if I keep keep this up, let's keep this experiment going, um, that could very well lead to that. And we've gotten plenty of growth out of the top here, so I don't think I'm actually delaying the growth of my grafts uh, too drastically. 
um, not drastically enough at least to, to stop this experiment. Um, I only want to let it go a few years because I don't want these lateral branches here to grow uh, for very long and get very thick. So I don't want to lead have big pruning wounds, but as long as they're under about three quarters of an inch or so, they should heal over just fine. Uh, shouldn't lead to very much um, shortened lifespan of this tree or anything like that. Um, on a good vigorous tree like this, it's going to heal over a spot like that, maybe even within a season. And that's kind of what you're looking for. You don't want to leave that too long. Uh, but having lateral branches like this leads to, to fruit sooner. Snipping back to smaller limbs is supposed to lead to that as well. But you'll never know till you try. So that's what I'm going for here. So I'll update you in the spring on that, uh, as well as the next project, which as you can see, I've got some suckers here and I don't want a lot of suckers. I don't, I don't really want to stunt the growth of the rest of this tree very much, but since I've got these two and they're already as developed as they are, and this one's even branching out on its own as well, um, which I might pinch some of those off just to slow that down. Um, I want to see about kind of having this partially be a stooling project. I've already added plenty of fine mulch here around the base. Um, I was gonna kinda gently check into that and see if I've got any root development. Uh, but essentially what I'd be looking for here is creating a couple more trees out of what I've got. But the problem with that is that I don't want to create higher roots on the main trunk here. And so, I haven't actually uncovered this yet, so you're you're discovering what I discover with me on this one. Uh, yeah, okay. So I've got a pretty nice looking root, uh, if you can see that, uh, coming off this this piece here. That looks really nice. Um, I'll just kind of have to add some soil around this main one if if it gets too far. Um, but I would say that that's not going to be quite enough root in order to sustain the amount of growth that's here. Uh, so one thing you can do with that is in the spring, when I would separate separate this piece off from the main, I'd go ahead and trim back quite a bit on this main piece, uh, and I'd probably go ahead and you know graft it at that time too. But it'll be just a additional root stock for me to utilize. Um, and then let's see this other side. See if I've got anything going on here. And it kind of looks like I do. Hard to get in on here. Okay, so this this root here is actually coming from the main trunk, but uh, yeah, uh, all that's from the main trunk. So uh, except for yep, I've got a little guy here. So, right here, this thicker one right here is coming off of this piece. Um, and then there's one on the back side here. So it looks like I'm already getting some roots that would maybe make this viable. But I'd like a little bit more. I'd like some thicker stuff going on. So what I've got here is some cups. And I use these when we're growing our peppers. Uh, they usually last a, a few years. Uh, but these are just normal plastic cups. You can get them at the store. And I like to snip on the bottom the edges. And I use these for peppers and tomatoes whenever we get them out of our seed starting trays. Uh, and you can see the root development because they're clear, which is very helpful. Uh, but we just bottom water, and then that water gets sucked in through these holes on the bottom. But what I'm going to do with these is, since they're pretty old, they've been used a few years, uh, not necessarily the most durable. You can especially see on this one all these cracks um, forming on the top. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and finish off the use of this with this project. I've cut off the bottom here. And what I'm actually going to do is to prevent roots from growing out of the main stem too high and yet wanting to have that happen on these others, I'm going to just go ahead and cover these up try and get all my roots in there. I'll be a little more careful here in a second to, to do that without breaking what already has been made for me. Uh, and just kind of 
get that covered up. And then I've got some finely ground mulch. It's not quite sawdust, but it's it's pretty light mulch. Um, and I might add in some of this that's uh, right around here that's really fine. A um, little bit of soil mixed in with it. And that mixture will be pretty loose and will help encourage just that contact with the soil and the this medium will help encourage making some roots. And so then I should have by next spring two new M111 root stalks that uh, I can graft to and have uh, additional trees from that. Before I go ahead and do that and then show you the result, I'm going to also tell you on these uh, lower leaves, I'm going to actually go ahead and pinch those off to about uh, the height I plan to fill this, uh, just just so that uh, maybe at these bud locations uh, we'll see some more roots shoot out. Roots don't always necessarily shoot out from where those are. I found it; they'll kind of just work their way, but they do they do find a spot and push out, and it's more likely that they will come out if there's a, a bud dormant under there. Um, but we'll see how that goes. Often in stooling, what they'll do is they'll bury some a, a root stalk like this uh, and snip it to where it's got I don't know five ten uh, buds that are viable and that'll get um, buried at least maybe at the beginning maybe as the season goes on but as those shoots are all coming out then those will be buried such that they all produce roots um, while still all feeding from the same original roots so I'm gonna pinch those off and then I'm not going to shorten this at all because I'm not looking to make multiple out of this. I could potentially do that as well, but uh, this late in the season, I'm just going to go ahead and try and get just these two new root stalks out of what I've got here. So I'll go ahead and get that put together. Alright, so I've got these two set up now. As you can see, I've worked uh, on getting the uh, mulch away from the base of this tree. Uh, if it goes a little higher, I mean, I can add a little bit of soil and I can just allow it to be higher. Uh, this is all rootstock uh, for the first, you know, foot, foot and a half here anyway, until you get up here. So there's no concern uh, like some have with uh, letting the grafted variety grow its own root and then create a full size uh, tree. I'm not concerned with any of that. Uh, a lot of times that is a concern because you've grafted about two inches above. Uh, that's where people say to put the union. From everything I've learned about doing this and doing inner stem grafting and those sorts of things, really the most uh, you get more benefit out of having your rootstock the more you let it be what the tree is, uh, essentially. So really, only those fruiting branches that I'm going to have are going to be the varieties. So my plan really is just to keep uh, this uh, whole lower stem to to be that rootstock and not going to change that at all. Um, pros and cons even of allowing, uh, if I were to let, have let this get older before I grafted to it, I could have let each scaffold limb start with being the rootstock and then grafting into that the varieties that I'm wanting this tree to have on it. Um, I'm just not quite patient enough to do that, but I did want to make sure that my graft union was higher up so that it would really be a restricted tree. I've got it about 15 feet from everything else, but I don't want it to get beyond those bounds. So I really wanted to have that dwarfing characteristic, um, the semi-dwarfing characteristic of this rootstock. So I'll uh, check with you guys again later. I'm going to go ahead and water water these. It'll kind of hold them in place a little bit better too. Maybe over the season I might put a couple rocks or bricks on the sides here to just make sure that those stay in place. Uh, but I think once they're watered, it's really going to kind of hold everything in place. And as long as I keep up with that, which I want to do anyway, just for the overall health of the tree, given our lack of rain lately. I'll probably also snip back on some of these extra uh, branches coming off of here. At least the ones that are lower, just thinking about the kind of tree it's going to become. I'm not going to want to have a lot of branches. This will be the about where the soil line will probably be whenever I make this its own tree. I'm not going to want to have fruiting branches that low on it. I'll check back in on this project later uh, and show you guys uh, how it looks. A lot of good root growth really happens after the tree 
up top starts going dormant and before it wakes up in the spring. So with any luck, uh, we'll get a lot of good root growth even before then, but especially then. And I'll have two really good viable spots uh, to graft onto next spring with uh, whatever varieties I want. But I'm definitely not going to let any new suckers come out of here and I'll be pruning any away that, that would come up um, just to make sure that uh, all the growth goes into all the experiments I've already started. Well, thanks for watching.